Yo, what up, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. I hope everybody enjoyed their Sunday off as the Giants had their bye week late in the season. I will say, I do miss feeling a little Victory Monday juice. It's two Mondays in a row prior to today. We got to walk into work, school, whatever you do, the trap, and it got to be video <laughs> Victory Monday. I missed it a little bit. We did put out a video early this morning because Tyrod Taylor has been activated off IR and he is eligible to play this Monday night versus the Green. I guess that would be next Monday since today's Monday. Next Monday night against the Green Bay Packers. The question is, what is Brian Dable going to do at the quarterback position? So I just want to ask everybody right now, if you were Brian Dable, who would you choose to start for the Giants Monday night versus the Green Bay Packers? Is it the veteran, the guy that you signed to be the backup quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, or would you throw Tommy DeVito back out there as he is riding a two-game winning streak? Look, I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with what I'm going to say because I've already gone and looked at the comments section. Tyrod Taylor needs to start at quarterback. For the New York Giants. I think it sends a bad message through the locker room seeps. That you're not playing the best player at the most important position. And the one that I would say teeter-totters the success of the team the most. I think there's no doubt Tyrod's better. I think everybody can agree on, agree on that. But there's something around the mojo around this football team. Around Tommy DeVito. And Marsh, let me ask you this. If you are going to make a playoff run, what quarterback is more likely to kind of catch a lightning in a bottle? <laughs> like, go on that magical run. Is it the Gabagool man or is it Tyrod? Look, Tommy DeVito, I understand, has won two games in a row. But he's done it against two teams that are now both picking inside the top five. And I don't want the, the mean Tommy DeVito fans out there to, to get upset when I say this, when you go back and watch the tape, Tommy DeVito leaves a lot of plays on the table. He doesn't get through his reads well. It's either a deep shot or a sack. He's not quick enough to process the reads. He's not quick enough to find those checkdowns down where you have a wide open Wandale Robinson or a wide open Daniel Bellinger or a wide open somebody else. DeVito has done enough to win you games. But I, I am going to go out and say it. The best quarterback of the year so far for the Giants has been Tyrod Taylor. And I don't think it's really been that close. Yeah. I mean, Ty, that was a while ago. But Tyrod looked really, really. I mean, we were talking about it. We were like, who's really better, Tyrod or DJ running this offense? And, like, it really didn't look that, that different. When Tyrod is back there, I just feel like the offense runs more on schedule. I feel like he makes the throws on time. I think he delivers the ball to the guy that's open. Does he have his limitations? Absolutely. There's a reason he's a 13-year pro and a backup at this point in his career. But I am, I am very confident in, in saying this. The Giants want to win football games. Brian Dable wants to end this season making a playoff push. We've already heard Joe Shane said we're not out of it yet. We've got four NFC games in the final five games. The Giants want to win games. And I know DeVito's 2-0. But if you're... Let's say this. If you're Brian Dable, do you want to go down swinging with Tyrod Taylor or do you want to go down swinging with Tommy DeVito? 
It's Tyrod Taylor. He's going to give you way more chances to win. You were one and two for beating the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. And, and really, in the first half, it's your fault, Brian. I know Tyrod deserves blame as well, but... And they kind of played devil's advocate with myself a little bit. I was saying the locker room will rally around Tom. They love Tyrod. And they, the fellas love Tyrod. I love Tyrod. I would want to go play for him, man. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's got to be... Never mind. It's probably got to be Tyrod, but... They're also trying to lose games, have that tank command. Giants are not trying to lose games. I wish they were at some times. I don't root for losses, but I do know that it may be better for teams right now yeah. that are in the Giants position to lose games. But the Giants aren't about that. John Mayer is not losing games on purpose. Tommy DeVito, he's been a cool story. Yeah. But I think the clock may have struck midnight and it's seeps. The defense has forced nine turnovers <laughs> in the two games Tommy DeVito has won, and they've won by a combined 31, less than 20 points in two games, and you have a plus nine turnover differential. And the Patriots commanders, in terms of right now, probably the two worst teams in the league. He's had some flashes. I love the third and 18 throw or whatever it was to Jalen Hyatt down the right side. The pocket mobility was good. He reset and fired. Yeah. Giants aren't Giants aren't wrong with Tommy DeVito. I'll, I'll admit it if I'm wrong. I'm expecting for Tyrod Taylor to be under center for the New York Football Giants on Monday night against the Green Bay Packers. We'll talk about more DeVito and Tyrod Taylor, and we'll talk about the reports coming out that the Giants are expected to clean house after the season. But first, I got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to PrizePicks.com slash CLNS and use the promo code CLNS and prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app in North America will match your initial deposit up to $100. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players and you simply choose more or less on their projected stat line. Those two players you saw, those are the guys that I'm rolling with on Monday Night Football. I'm going to go with less on Jake Browning's passing yards, the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals, and I'm going to go with more rushing yards for Travis Etn. More than 67 and a half. You could roll with my picks or fade my picks, but if you're going to play Daily Fantasy, do it with the proud sponsor of Giants Now, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. I'll make sure all that good stuff as clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. When we do the reads during the vid, just don't show the card because they're from oh, the yeah, nice yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah. We do want to get to two mailbacks in today's video. Oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, we just need to talk some Giants football. I need to answer questions from you guys. So I'm calling on all the real ones to get your questions in on the show. I thought the last two mailbags we did on the channel – we're awesome. We broke yep. down the draft classes for Joe Shane in 2022 and 2023. And I love answering questions from you guys. So if you haven't yet, get your questions in. Hashtag Giants. Just include that in your comment in the comment section down below. Or you can super chat like my guy, MG. Best <laughs> initials in the game. Says MG, Tommy Cutlets Monday to you and the Giants fans, brother. If the Giants stay around five and eight in the first five to eight, pick five and eight in the first round, who do they take if they don't take a quarterback? Appreciate you, my man. That's a great question, MG. And he says, my noun last name is pronounced Guillermo. 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 Mike Guillermo, my man. Mike Guillermo. Well, Mike, I'll say this to you. One, how the hell are you doing? Two, good to see you. Three, best initials in the game. But four, to answer your question, if the Giants are picking anywhere from five to eight in the first round, it's not going to be a quarterback. I want to. I know everyone's BPA, best player available, best player available. Let's let's address what position they need. And there's a, there's multiple of them. You need a receiver. You need another edge rusher, and you might need another right tackle. A name that I continue to see mocked to the Giants is Malik Neighbors, the wide receiver at LSU. Dane Brugger of the Athletic had him mocked to them. Last week in the Pro Football Focus, who put out a mock draft this morning, had Pro Football Focus selecting Malik Neighbors. Seeps, Neighbors is a stud. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Neighbors. Um, I would really be curious if the Giants would go tackle with their first pick. Like, could you see a situation, Marsh, 
they take a tackle, possibly trade Evan Neal. Do you think that could ever be a situation? I would. I could see the Giants taking a tackle, maybe not round one, round two, but I don't see a team that wants to trade for Evan Neal. Yeah. Look, I've said it time and time again. Just kick him inside. I've watched enough tape. The kid can't play guard. Every, He's got no center of gravity, no balance. He's not violent at the punch point. Every every bad tackle becomes a good guard. Yeah, that's what they tell you. It's almost like on Madden. When your offensive tackle is a 78 overall, you just move him to guard. He becomes an 84. Seriously? <laughs> Maybe? Just not. No. No. People are talking. I, um, I do not seal Evan Neal. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope yeah. I'm wrong. Um, I don't see Evan Neal being a good guard in this league. We talked about that last week. Someone at the Joe Shane press conference asked him, do you ever think about moving Neal inside the guard? And he said, no, not really. So I'm sure that's going to be a step at some point in this. But my, Mike G, I'm rolling with either a receiver Malik Neighbors, and I'm a big fan of Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama, man. Yeah. You just watch him, and Turner, he flies off the screen, man. He also, I love guys like that. We're in a big-time game against Georgia. You could tell he's one of the better players on the field. Like, Agreed. he popped against Georgia. I like I like Dallas Turner. Um, I like Neighbors. Would you go another secondary guy? Maybe, like, a little Kool-Aid? Yeah. A um, McKinney, a Dory Jackson replacement. He's another guy. Giants may lose a Dory Jackson. They may lose Xavier McKinney. Um, tell you what, if it is Wink still, he would have a field day with a guy like Kool-Aid. Agreed. I don't know. I also like Keon Coleman, man. I know some so people are a little bit lower on him. So um, I did. I did hear an interview with him. Don't. And obviously, you don't. It doesn't really matter if your receiver's good behind the mic. He kind of seems like a jackass. Really? Yeah, a little bit. But he's an unreal talent. Unreal talent. I just don't. Is he Quentin Johnston 2.0? That's, that's what I'm also kind of I thinking. Also, I want to take my little victory lap real quick. A lot oh. of you told me we should have drafted Quentin Johnson because he was six foot four. The guy stinks. He, he can't run one. routes. He can't catch. Dude, he was just, I don't know what made him so good at TCU, but he's not that He athletic. played in the Big 12, the worst defensive True. conference in college football. Yeah, exactly. And he had a good game against Michigan. Like, that, that got him drafted. You, he stinks. He is terrible. I think Carl was a Quentin Johnston guy now that I think about it. Carl was a Quentin Johnston guy. We need a big guy on the outside. Quentin Johnston stinks, and I told you so. Oh, my. Well, if you're a six foot four body catcher, that means you're not good. Yeah. Catch the ball with your hands, run a route. It's like those big receivers who aren't that, that, like. If you can't separate in college, you're not going to separate in the NFL. No. Um, there's that. What up, Neil? Neil says, hi, Marshall. Like your channel bunches. My question to you is, go Giants or go Giants? How about go Giants? <laughs> Love that. Get your questions in, though. We're about to dive into the latest rumors on this coaching staff. Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post put out, uh, really, he hopped on somebody else's podcast. And it seemed like Giants may be moving on from all off all coordinators in the offseason. Also, we're getting a report that the Giants running back coach is expected to be hired as the Syracuse offensive coordinator. So this coaching staff in a couple of weeks could look extremely different. Wow. And the Giants have waived Matt Barkley, cut Jacob Eason. Tyrod Taylor is going to play and he's going to start. Yeah, I think that's... Bye-bye, Matt Barkley. Bye bye, Jacob. Eighty two Eason. Eighty two K Eason. When do you think he announces? Like, I think it's got to be at tomorrow. I think it's got to be tomorrow. Because media is going to see who's getting first team reps. Exactly. Wow. I, I think uh, I think tomorrow a starting quarterback will be announced, but we're going to find out. Some news though: uh, Matt Barkley has been waived by the Giants. Jacob Eason has been waived by the Giants, and. Tyrod Taylor has been activated off IR and is expected to be ready to go this Sunday, and he may actually be the starting quarterback. But let's dive into this kind of smoke that's circling around the New York Giants. Yo, 
what's going on, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. There has been a lot of smoke, to say the least, around the New York Giants coaching staff, and specifically with Brian Dable and Wink Martindale. There was a, um, a report a couple of weeks ago that the Giants may move on from Wink Martindale in season. And then Jay Glazer of Fox Sports doubled down on that. Then there was a report from the volume that said that every single coaching staff on the Giants does not like Brian Dable. They think he is a clown, and they are tired of Brian Dable MFing coaches on this coaching staff. And now Ryan Dunleavy of the New York Post, who is plugged in with this team. He was all over the Saquon Barkley situation. He was all over the Daniel Jones situation. He thinks that all three coordinators, Mike Kafka, Wink Martindale, and Thomas McGahee, will not be back with the New York Giants next season. And let's be honest, after the Giants did what they did last year, the expectations were sky high for this football team. And any time you fall short of expectations, specifically in the National Football League, there are going to be major changes. These things happen after disappointing seasons. I'm going to tell you in a little bit why I'm not really ready to just yank the cord on Wink Martindale and Mike Kafka. Ryan Dunleavy said this, I don't think any of the Giants' three coordinators will be here next season. When you have a season like this, change is inevitable. Mike Kafka could be looking to go somewhere else, either develop QBs or calls plays elsewhere. We'll talk about Wing Martindale in a second. Let's really just dive in a little bit into Mike Kafka. I think Kafka, it's kind of hard to grade his tenure with the New York Giants. Just like it's difficult to evaluate Daniel Jones with the New York Giants. He doesn't have a lot of ammunition to work with. He's on his third string quarterback. They've had 15 different offensive line combinations. Your star tight end got hurt. Your wide receivers are not really the most dominant guys. But what we saw last year was incredible. Let's focus on this year. We'll go to next year, last year in a second. The Giants offensive stats this year are absolutely putrid. They are on pace to be one of the worst offenses in NFL history, averaging less than 14 points per game, less than 290 yards of total offense, one of the Exactly, the worst uh, passing offense in the National Football League. Rush offense has been decent-ish, I guess, uh, which is crazy because you're usually behind in a lot of games, and when you're behind, you throw. Um, look, as bad as these numbers are right here, Mike Kafka made Daniel Jones look pretty damn good last year. And I don't want to give Kafka all the credit in the world. I'm sure Dable had a huge part in how the Giants ran their offense last year. But when it comes to scheming people open, which... The data says the Giants have some of the most separation created amongst wide receivers in this league. You can't make the passes for the quarterback. And the thing that I love the most about Mike Kafka is the efficiency and the creativity in the red zone, at least in 2022. In 2022, the Giants were the fifth-rated red zone offense in touchdown percentage. That tells me you have a creative offensive coordinator. You're finding different and uni unique ways to score in that area. And what you are putting on the chalkboard is being translated to what is going on the gridiron. I would bring back Mike Kafka. I think that Kafka is a smart football coach. He's the guy that I thought brought the best out of your quarterback. Look, He's drawn up a game plan that got Tommy DeVito two wins. He drew up a game plan that had Tyrod Taylor get a win and have a chance to take down the Buffalo Bills on the one-yard line. Is it just an offensive explosion? No. I understand why some people would want to move on from him. Who are you going to get? I'm not sure. we got a list of a couple of names. We'll roll through these quickly. Gerard Johnson, the quarterback coach for the Houston Texans. You look at what he's been able to do when it comes to the development and the maturation of of C.J. Stroud, you got to like that. And with the thought and the idea out there that the Giants could draft a quarterback this offseason, getting a guy like Johnson to call your plays, former quarterback in the NFL, was good at Texas A&M, maybe you get a guy that could develop another guy. What about Kevin Petulo? I'm sorry if I apologize for butchering that name. He's the passing game coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he's done a really good job with Jalen Hurts since 2021. Started coaching in 2003 at South Florida, where he also played college football. He specializes in quarterbacks and wide receivers, two positions the Giants could use a little bit more beef on. If I had to predict who the next offensive coordinator for the Giants is, I'm going to put my money on Ken Dorsey, who was the offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. He was fired midseason, but if you rewind the clock, to the offseason of the uh, uh, the offseason prior to the 2022 season, 
Brian Dable wanted to hire Ken Dorsey as his offensive coordinator, but he elected to stay and took an upgrade at, in Buffalo and from QB coach to play caller, and the Giants settled on Mike, Mike Kafka. I think he's a good play caller, and I think the connection between him and Dable make him a possible match. What about Tanner Engstrand, the passing game corner and coordinator for the Detroit Lions? He's in his fourth season with Detroit. He was the Lions tight end coach in 2022, and he's worked with Jim Harbaugh at San Diego and Michigan. When I watch the Detroit Lions, I just like what they do offensively, and I think he's a guy that could come in and help kind of modernize and help this Giants playbook if you do move on from a guy like Mike Kafka. What about Mike Denbrock, the OC for LSU? Right now, LSU, LSU is one of the best, if not the best, offense in college football. I love what he did with Jaden Daniels um, from his from 2022 season to the 2023 season. He was a Cincinnati OC in 2018 to 2020. And if the Giants want to draft Jaden Daniels, Denbrock should be targeted. A guy that knows him well, and he's somebody that I think could translate um, and kind of just help anytime you have a relationship with your quarterback that you're going to get. Going back to college, I think that makes some sense. Any familiarity, and any comfortability, I think, could help a rookie quarterback. What about Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator and QB coach for Washington? Love what he's done with Michael Penix, and I believe the same thing is true. If you're going to draft potentially the college quarterback, Michael Penix out of Washington, what about bringing a guy that he knows and a guy that knows him inside and out? Maybe you want to bring a guy that's had a lot of success in the NFL and he's been around for a little bit. What about Deuce Staley, the former running back? I think he'd be a good fit with the New York Giants as offensive coordinator. He's worked under Andy Reid, Chip Kelly, and Doug Peterson. So he's got a lot of different great offensive minds in his head and kind of his DNA and makeup of what an NFL offense should be. And Staley became a vocal leader on Campbell's staff last year as the Lions assistant head coach. I just liked what he was about when I was watching Hard Knocks last year. What about Jake Peets, the passing game coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams? He's been an offensive and assistant QB coach from 2017 to 2019, has worked under Nick Saban as a QB coach, and Sean McVay speaks very highly of him. And we've seen a couple of other Sean McVay disciples excel other places in the National Football League. What about Joe Blamier? I know I'm saying that wrong. The passing game coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's been a coach with the Chiefs since 2016. Maybe you don't want to go down the same road of Mike Kafka where you brought in a former Chief, and I understand that, but Andy Reid has praised him um, just on the innovative type of offense he runs and creative concepts. And I think he'd work well with an athletic QB and the guys that I want to target in this draft when you talk about Michael Penix and as well as Jaden Daniels. Even Bo Nix is somewhat athletic. Uh, I think those guys would all thrive under him. But the question is, should the Giants fire Mike Kafka? In my opinion, those are the nine guys that are probably at the top of everyone's list when it comes to hiring new offensive coordinators. If the Giants fired him, I think they'd look that way. What do you think, though? Should the Giants fire Mike Kafka? Type Y for yes, type N for next. Uh, N for no. Coming up next, Wink Martindale and the New York Giants. Could they mutually be parting ways? We've got some reports on that we'll dive into in a second. But first, I got to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the promo code CLNS, and Prize Picks will match your initial deposit up to $100. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players. You choose more or less on their projected stat line, and then you just let the players do their thing. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. It's my favorite way to play fantasy sports. It's the number one way to play daily fantasy sports. And you can actually win real money. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Look, there has been a lot of smoke around Wink Martindale and Brian Dable. There was reports that they do not like each other. They can't stand each other. They want to move on. I'll say this. Wink Martindale's coached some pretty good games in the past couple of years. And I think that he is still a really good defensive coordinator. Let's go to what Ryan Dunleavy had to say. Maybe he can illustrate it in a better way than I can. He said, Wink Martindale, that's the one fans want to keep. That's the one that will hurt Dable's cachet with the fan base the most. Look, Wink wore out his welcome with the Ravens after four years. And Brian Dable is very hard on his coaches. He also went on to say how Dable and Martindale have completely 
contrasting personalities. Dable is a guy that's loud and on sideline. He's expressive and he, and he shows all his emotions. Where Wink Martindale is cool, calm, and collected. Dable is a keep everything in house guy. Martindale's an open book. You look at what happened in the Xavier McKinney situation. And I'm sure that Wink Martindale's not happy with the way the offense is playing. And Brian Dable is responsible for the offense. That's why he's hired here. Look, Wink is a good defensive coordinator. Anyone that tells you that Martindale is not a good DC, they are they're just simply wrong. And also this. You don't have to love your coworkers. I don't even like seeps, and we have to work all the day, all day together. I don't like him. I don't like Roly. I don't like any of the guys I work with. But we find a way to get it done because we're mature professionals. We have professional maturity, to quote Brett Scott. You don't have to love your coworkers. He's a good DC. But I will say, when you work with someone and they constantly MF you, MF Wink, MF Martindale, MF Wink, maybe that does get a little bit annoying. I think if he moves on, it may be actually Wink Martindale moving on. And I think if it does happen, it'll be a agreed to part ways. Uh, someone asked if I like Tom Downey. No, I don't like him either. You look at the defensive stats for the Giants. Once again, not all that great. But I will say this. Wink Martindale's development when it comes to the personnel on this team is apparent. I mean, Kayvon Thibodeau in year two was on pace to have 16 sacks this season. Dexter Lawrence went from being a really good interior defensive lineman to, in my opinion, the best interior defensive lineman in the National Football League. Bobby O'Karrake, he was good with Indy. He's better with the Giants. Micah McFadden, a fifth-round pick. He looks like a long-term starter in this league. Xavier McKinney has made some plays under him. Deontay Banks as a rookie, I think, continues to get better week over week. You see the development and kind of just the style on the field. It's apparent with Wink Martindale. What are you going to do? Are you going to fire him? Who are you going to hire that's better? I'm sure there's somebody out there that is better than Wink Martindale. I don't know who it is. I'm not a GM. It's going to be Joe Shane and Brian Dable's job to find it. If I had to predict it, I could see the Giants moving on from Mike Kafka and Wink Martindale. Not so sure I would just do that, though. I'll ask you, should the Giants fire Wink? Type F for fire, type K for keep. One guy that I believe 100% should be fired, and I don't love saying this because I don't enjoy seeing grown men that support their family lose their job. But Thomas McGahey, the special teams coordinator for the Giants, the minute after the final whistle is blown when the Giants season is over, he should be fired. He should be relieved of his duties. He's been bad for a while. I think he's been with the Giants for seven years at this point, and it always seems like the Giants are one of the worst special teams in the league. Right now, pro football focus has the Giants special teams ranked as 24th in the league. <sighs> Thomas McGahey should not be with the Giants next year. Don't want to spend too much more time on that. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in. If you haven't yet, give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. And if you want to continue the conversation on what the Giants are going to do with their coaching staff, send me a DM over there, and let's chop it up. Also, yeah, I didn't even say it in there. Micah Gibson, Bobby Johnson is it should also be fired. Just wanted to focus on the uh, co the uh, coordinators right there. But yeah, Bobby Johnson should also be gone. A lot of people look like they want to keep Wink Martindale. Seeps, seen a lot of K's in the chat. I'd probably, I'd probably keep Wink if I was in their spot. It looks like people want Kafka fired and they want to keep Wink. I would personally yeah. want to keep both. I think continuity matters in the NFL. Um, the guy, I mean, look, Wink, Mike Kafka just won two games with fucking Tommy DeVito as his quarterback. Wow. I understand that they didn't just blow people out of the water offensively. But to do that and drop a game plan that can work with your third string QB who's a UDFA in his rookie year, I think it's pretty and impressive. It's, and it's not even like they got weapons right now. Not like, even it's not even like you're no. working with a beat up offensive line. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Mike G coming back with a $10 super chat. My man says, no other takers. I'll hop in again. <laughs> My man, that's why you're a real one. Who do you like for a safety replacement? For McKinney, either in the free in free agency or the draft? That's a good question. Let me pull up a list, 2024 NFL free agents. And um let me see. Let the boy go look at some at some safeties, maybe. I, I could cook. 
I, I like Jason Pinnock. Um, I'm not saying he's your replacement. But um, I also wouldn't mind seeing Dane Belton play a little bit more. It was a fourth-round pick out of Iowa. Those guys are supposed to be playing for you by year three. Yeah. Um, what if you go and bring in a veteran like Micah, Micah Hyatt on a one-year deal? Um, I like J. Ron Curse a lot. I think J. Ron Curse is a pretty good player. Um, you know, there's not any real great safeties in free agency. Uh, Buda Baker as a team option. Maybe you go out and cash him out. I also don't love overpaying at the safety position. No. I think that's a position that you should try and fill with draft picks. Um, I like Micah Hyde, man. A veteran. Dable and Joe Shane know him. And I know he's 33 and his best years are behind him, but what about a cheap one-year deal? Um, I also like Chuck Clark. He's got ties to Wink Martindale. I like J. Ron Curse. Uh, he's made some pretty good plays for the Cowboys this year. Um, Darnell Savage from Green Bay is coming back from an injury. He was pretty good uh, at times. If I had to pay one, I'm going to go on a, a cheap Micah Hyde deal. Cheap Micah Hyde deal. Or maybe you get Chauncey Gardner-Johnson on a cheap deal and bring some swag and some toughness to this defense. In the draft, I, I, don't, I don't have a great answer for you in the draft. I'll blame myself for that one. I haven't gotten into the weeds of the safety prospects just yet, um, but I don't think the Giants would take a safety within the first three picks. Uh, three picks in the first two rounds for the Giants. I don't think safety would be one of those guys. Mike, as soon as I do more draft coverage, though, and start to study these guys' tape, I got an answer for you when it comes to safety positions. My guy, Tuto. What's Tuto. up, Brody? Massive salutes and respects to Big Boss Marshy and all the diehard Giants fans in America. And slap all the stinky boys and losers from Doe Hard and Fat. <laughs> Tuto, you're a legend, my man. What a go. I also think I saw Tuto in the chat saying that he thinks Mike Kafka should be fired. Really? Yeah, that's what Tuto was saying in the chat. If Tuto was saying it, I'm probably saying it. Man. Tuto, do you think you could call some plays for the Giants? Take the rug. Do we go rugby style offense? What does Tuto think of the tush push? I would love to know that. That's a great question. Tuto, what do you think of the tush push, my man? Also, Sahagan's detailing, my man, coming in with a $2 super. He says, Dorsey is our next offensive coordinator. I do think, first, Sahagan's detailing. Thanks for stopping by and always showing love. I do think that a guy at the top of the list for the Giants, if they do fire Mike Kafka, will be Dorsey. Look, the Giants, that was the Giants' number one choice last, and I guess that wasn't last year, the, the offseason going into the 2022 season. And I think the relationships matter, man. Um, it's been reported Brian Dable is not easy to work with. And if he's going to hire someone, it's probably someone he knows he can work with, and he knows that him and Dorsey worked well together in Buffalo when Dable was the O.C., and Dorsey was the quarterback coach. So, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you right there. We are going to close the show with two mailbags on today's cool. video. Seeps, how's the question? How are the questions? <clears throat> She's pretty solid. Kind Some of good proud. questions in there? I'm, I'm pretty proud of the fellows right now. Good stuff. And the ladies, too. Shout out to the ladies. Always, always some, some real ones in here. Jay Sports Card said Seeps is the next Jason Seahorn. Seeps could never play DB. Seeps is uh, a hand in the dirt type of player. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. He doesn't have that mobility in space. I was, I wasn't blessed with the hip flexibility and the <laughs> long Achilles, dude. It's just not, it's just not there. Tuto says, Rob, I've missed the memo. What was the rush push? Maybe? Oh, the tush push. The tush push. The play the Eagles run where they run the QB sneak and everyone pushes them from behind. Yeah. Um. What do you think of that? That's rugby scrum one on one. That is. I would love to know how would you stop it, Tuto? I think you just put Tuto um over the center. Is that my guy, Mr. Rick, in the chat? Chaz in the chat? It's been a little bit. It's been a while. Are how... you back in the States? Are you back in America? How was it? Mr. Rick, I hope you enjoyed the trip. Short show. We still got two mailbags. Still got two mailbags. Mr. Rick, come on, man. We're coming off a bye week. I'm searching for this stuff, man. I'm checking the software right now. We've been think, live for 34 minutes. I don't think I have a hashtag Giants question from Cha in the software. Mr. Rick, a.k.a. Cha, has not put his question in just yet. That's, that's crazy. That's What's on your mind? What's on your mind, Mr. Rick? <laughs> 
Emily Dempsey in the chat. What up, Emily? Uh, what up, Emily? No F Emily's today. No, not no F Emily's. Leonard Zennard's in the building. What's Love the that. Best question asked so far. Jay Sports Card says options in free agency or draft a right tackle. Either or. Either or. Yui says uh, hashtag giant. Steven in the chat. Steven Bellinas. That's, he got to be real careful saying that one. Zach Attack getting their question in. I think we're getting a lot of questions in yeah, here. You guys today. are killing it right now. If your question doesn't get on screen, you can yell at Seeps because there's a lot of them. Do you think I avoid all starting? What? Like starting questions, like with Tyrod and DeVito. Uh, yeah, just because yeah. we've already kind of broken that yeah. down. Yeah. That is, I, I will not be putting any questions up there on who should start. Just... Because by the, yeah, there's going to be a starter named by probably before yeah. you. Exactly, exactly. Good look, good look, good look, good look. Micah says FC. <laughs> oh, be nice, I'm Micah. sorry, Mike. I saw your question in there. I, uh, that's on me. Ridiculous. Bill! What up, Billy? Gus Nini in the chat. J Sports Card. I feel like Jay Sports Card is always asking me questions about Saquon Barkley. Could be wrong. <laughs> I feel like I just had deja vu of us in this studio uh, answering questions about if the Giants should extend Saquon or not from Jay Sports Card. Deja vu is so weird sometimes. You just get that euphoric feeling, man. I get that just feeling. Do. All righty. Hashtag Giants or Super Chats. All Super Chats skip the line and are guaranteed to get on the show. Um, Saquon Barkley says, is it possible to trade for Cooper? How about you include a hashtag Giants in there, brother? We might put that up on the show. Cha says, was able to watch Giants chat in Spain, but not on the ship for 10 days. Jones for longer shows. Jones for longer shows. Daniel Jones for longer shows. I don't know if I get... Am I... Am I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't I, know. There's got to be a typo in there somewhere. Oh, yeah, Saquon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Rick, it's I hope quad. you had a good time, my man. It's quad box right now? It's quad bo box? No, clock? Leonard Zinner is not about Le the quad box. Leonard Zinner, would you send in a $500 super chat to see Marshall quad box on Monday Night Football? <laughs> I would throw up so much. Oh, no, it would have to be like end of the show. You I think if I did one, I think if I did one, I would throw up. Dude, I did, I did one. I was about to throw up. Like, I don't do well off of tobacco. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Five hundred dollars super chat. We might have to consider it. <laughs> no. Yeah, that would that would that would get ugly. Okay. Yeah, he definitely meant he couldn't get the show on the beach on the on the sh on the boat. Which one? The boat should be playing this show on every TV. It's gotta be at the bars on the boat. When he gets his promotion, I, I can't do a quad box. <laughs> I don't even think I could do one to be honest with you. Could you imagine that? My guy Tuto coming in with a five dollar super chat says, "Big Boss Marsh, I'll be able to play everywhere in any position all day. All, all I need is the thumbs down signal to pancake somebody, boss." If I'm building a, a Giants now football team, I think Tuto's first pick. No doubt, I'm getting Tuto to come off the edge. I want to see playing on both sides. I want I pick a team and you pick a team and we both have to be QBs and I want two to two to okay. sack your ass. Oh, who would who would my my first pick might be Leonard Zinnard in the slot. Leonard Zinnard in the slot. <laughs> I like Leonard Zinnard in the slot. I just I just I just like the feel. I'm I'm definitely gonna pick Mr. Rick early on, but oh, a little yeah. bit of a wild card here. I'm not gonna pick him to be a player. I'm okay. picking him to be the head. Of communications. Okay. Head of I communications. Like See, He's my head PR guy. I want him handling everything that's said about our team. I would probably match you with Corinne. Oh. I would match you with go Corinne on that. Okay. I like that. I like that. I just know uh, <laughs> Mr. Rick knows a thing or two about the current. Let me just stop while I'm ahead. All righty. Let's get into <laughs> a mailbag on today's show. Hashtag Giants or Super Chat. Zach Attack says, I could play right tackle. As long as you're better than Nevin Neal, you could be on my team. Gus Nini says, I play tight end and outside linebacker. Woo! That's a stud. That's a stud right there. Rob Jigga says, can I have a job? We'll hold a tryout for Rob Jigga. You know who I put? where I'm putting Rob Jigga? I'm putting him at punt returner because I know he's going to catch it, and he's not going to muff the punt. I can depend on Rob Jigga I to like catch that. it. 
Or even I can see him maybe in the little box safety out of Rob. I don't know. <laughs> Rob feels like a guy Ooh. that would crack some skulls. Well, a little Cam Chancellor coming downhill. <laughs> I don't know. Rob Rob just freaks me out a little bit. Like I don't want to see him if I'm a receiver coming all over the middle of the field. Oh no, you don't want to run you don't want to run across the middle. I feel like he's a guy that would wear like forty seven at safety too. You there's a guy that's come <laughs> little John Lynch vibes. I think Leonard Zinner. Thoughts on OJ Simpson. I mean Jalen Carter crying. Mr. Rick is having withdrawals. He's an addict. He's oh, addicted wow. to Giants now by Chat Sports. <laughs> Rosenberry says, I got that wide receiver safety knowledge. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. I feel like the wide receiver room would be a bit, cr- a bit crowded. We got a lot of players. Yeah. We got a lot of players. Rob Jiggis says, wow. Thank you, Marshall. <laughs> I could trust you back there, huh? I could trust you. I don't have to say, God dang it, Richie James. Catch the ball. I'm still taking Mr. Rick, though, to be the head of uh, PR and make sure that nobody oh, is, is on Twitter, especially on YouTube, is saying anything about the Giants. It's not true. Dinrod says, I play linebacker. Love that. Micah says, I run from Bigfoot in Alaska. I can be RB1. Love that. I can like that. Leonard Zinnard says, put me at center. <laughs> I'm <kidding. laughs> Leonard, you're my slot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tyrano Infinity. What up, brother? Tuto. Tuto. Back again. Says Marsh. I'll be fined, ejected, or suspended in every NFL game. Sweet sound of bones cracking when I play OTs with spine shattering tackles. He's still my first overall pick. I might play him everywhere. I might put this guy at running back. A little little, Brandon Jacobs vibes. Yeah, a little old school, a little Toby Gerhardt. Like. Mr. Rick says, Pat out, Rick in. Yes, sir. We'll see you later, Pat. Not you, (laughs) a different Pat. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) You know who we're talking about. I know, I know. Rob says, I will hit them so hard they have snot bubbles coming out. Yikes, (sighs) that sounds criminal. Matt Baysmore with the new profile picture. Rocking the big five. Shout out to Kayvon Thibodeau. Says, what's up, y'all? What position would I play? I was a linebacker before I went blind. No, not water boy. I want Okay. I got okay, Matt Baysmore. I think I also have him coming off the edge, man. A little edge. I a little, like edge. A little edge. One job. Get to the quarterback. Get to the quarterback. I kind of kinda like, like an old school linebacker. Like a little Brian Erlacher. Brian Erlacher. Like he's like like he's like ripping smelling salts before the play. <laughs> he's like, all right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Matt Baysmore is down to knock heads. Yes. Matt Baysmore is down to knock heads. <laughs> I love that. I love the jersey, Matt. I love the jersey. Mr. Rick, you found... (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. Oh, Melissa. I thought she was in Trenton, New Jersey, going to college after she said she was in high school. No kidding. Jay Liv in the building. What up, man? Rob Jiga says Tuto can be our Mike Allstott. Matt Bazemore, I have you come... I have you coming off the edge, brother. I have yeah. you coming off the edge, a little dip and rip, get that shoulder. It's all about that sh- You got to get down and get that dip and rip. And I want you eat. I want a player on my team that's not afraid to get a roughing the passer. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it in the first quarter and send a message. Yeah. Let the QB know you're not standing in the pocket and just letting things fly <laughs> with Matt Bazemore coming off the edge. He said he already has Jordan Love in, in his sights. <laughs> Jordan, it's a bad week to be Jordan it's Love. It's a bad week. <laughs> it's a bad week to be Jordan Love. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. I thought I was supposed to stop. That's great. Corinne says, yikes, Jay Liv, not the Raiders chat. Yikes. Jay Liv. <laughs> hey, man, there's rumors. There's hey, rumors. No, <laughs> not, not just yet, Jay Liv. Gus Nini says, that's me. I put QBs on their ass when I'm blitzing. I see Gus Nini as a stand-up linebacker coming off the edge. Oh, okay. He's giving me kind of like a Matthias so- Kiwanuka vibes, whoever the real Giants fans are. You give me Gus Nini gives me Matthias Kiwanuka vibes. Where, where are my DBs? I feel like Emily Dempsey might be a DB. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I also see change. Jay Liv oh. playing a little, you know, box safety. I could see, yeah, Jay Liv, a little handsy, a little coming in the little. coming in the slot. Get your hands on him. Yeah. I like that. I oh. like that. Emily Dempsey, you are not a bench warmer. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Dempsey is like that. She's like that smaller corner on the outside, like a little. 
and just feisty. Just feisty. Kind of like, she's our Jason Seahorn. Emily she Dempsey's our Jason Seahorn. Let's ride. Jay Liv says, yes, I watched the Raiders chat, which was doing the Broncos-Texans game. Yes, they were. Yeah, yes, crazy. they were. As we got Cam Johnson. CJ. Says, sign Johnny football. Give him $40 million. Shit, we gave Daniel Jones $40 million. Let's give another quarterback $40 million. I'll still ne never get over it. You guys haven't seen the clip. It was Johnny Football in his documentary. The dude goes, I have watched zero seconds of game film in my entire NFL career. I, I, I literally couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And Mr. Rick, he was actually looking good. Um, he was actually alive. And then the, obviously the Eagles got Shaq on her today. They just get everybody. Ridiculous. Yeah, Ridiculous. Leonard, that was an elite documentary. Steven Blenis? What position am I? Steven Blenis. I don't think of the name. Steven Is that a tight end? Like Blenis? 87. Hot take here? You know who I'm envisioning? And here he comes. Steven Blenis with a chance. To send the Giants to the Super Bowl <laughs> oh, yeah, with yeah. a 47 yard like kick that. off the left hash. Stephen like Blenis that. is our clutch kicker. Stephen Blenis. Long snapper, I'll do you one better. You're our kicker. Why, right? <laughs> Stephen Blenis is our kicker. What's oh up? Oh, my God. Giants for life, what's up, Brody? Leonard, that was perfect. I trust him. I trust him. Trust him with my life. Tyler Soto says, I'm five foot five, weighing in at 138 pounds. I was told milk would help, and that turned out to be a lie. What position would I play, and why is it the football itself? I see Tyler Soto as our sneaky fullback. Okay. He I may like not that. have the size, but he's got the heart. It's all here. He's not afraid to go put a face he's mask in somebody's his, chest. He's putting his head down, it's right there. And he's also a guy that can sneak out of the backfield for a little five-yard dump off and get north and south. Yep, yep. Tyler's a guy that I feel like just eats green grass, man. He sees <laughs> green grass and he gets yards. <laughs> Krimi is 100% the tailback on the team. Krimi would want to be... Um, Krimi would be... He'd want to be the center because he'd yeah. always want someone's hands under his butt. That Krimi's the center. No, this is what Krimi is. Krimi would fart on the quarterback's hands and think it's funny. And there, there, there's a fumble, and he's like, well, I was doing my job. You, you, you know who he is? He's OBJ. Krimi's OBJ? All the talent in the world, a little bit a little, a little bit of a personality. A little bit of a, a look at me? A little bit of a look at me guy. A little bit of a diva receiver. That's who I'm going uh, Krimi as. All the talent. We do have a great team, Emily. I do agree. Carl says, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see what he is. Yeah, what are you, Carl? Let's, let's figure it out. <laughs> Carl, Carl's the running back. Carl's yeah, the Carl running here. back. He's, he's your, a scat back. He's, he's your high school yes. running back that gets all the girls. He goes yeah, to school. Yeah, yeah. He's he wears, too cool for us. Exactly. Yeah. He's got the letterman on. He rocks a gold yeah. chain in the hallways telling the girls, uh -huh. you better come to my game, game tonight, shorty. Yeah. You want to see me put up a buck fifty? And then all of his old linemen are like, "We're the ones doing all yep. the work." He's like, "Man, that's all me." Carl, <laughs> you pretty much are Booby Miles. <laughs> Carl is Booby Miles. That's who he is. Look oh. at me. I don't lift weights. I got all the game in the world. You think I lift weights? That's Carl. That's oh Carl. My God. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, Carl. That's you. Leonard Zenner said, "Who is the Evan Neal comparison?" Uh, I don't think that's we don't fair. Want to disrespect yeah, we don't want to guys. disrespect anybody. That's not fair. Carl is definitely Booby Miles. <laughs> I'm dead. When Booby knocks somebody out, he do it with black nikes on his feet. <laughs> Friday Night Lights, probably my favorite football movie of all time. All righty, let's get into a mailbag. Have we even gotten into one yet? No. Let's we'll get, get into, into it. One. Let's get into it. Hashtag. Yo, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate everybody for taking time out of their busy schedule to rock and roll with us for a little bit. We're just going to answer questions in today's video. If you haven't yet, hit that sub button because only subscribers get questions answered. This first one coming in from NYG34 says, do you think the Giants should sign Mike Evans this offseason? They still need a true number one, and he is done with Tampa. 
Look, Mike Evans is once again putting together a great season. He's got 61 catches for over 1,000 yards, and he's got once again double-digit touchdowns. He's a guy, no matter what, if he's on your team, he's going to produce. And I do agree with you that the Giants do need another outside receiver. The only thing that concerns me with Mike Evans is how much longer is he going to be able to do it? Uh, he's approaching 30 years old if he's not already 30 years old. And sometimes you see these big, tall, I would say possession receivers kind of fall off a little bit quicker. And I'm not saying Mike Evans is going to do that. Mike Evans is going to be a Hall of Famer. If he wants to come here and he wants to play on a reasonable salary, I'm not paying him $30 million. Yes. But I believe that Mike Evans is going to look for a payday. And I'm going to predict that Mike Evans is going to sign with the Houston Texans in free agency. From Galveston, Texas, reportedly he is a, grew up kind of a Texans fan for the limited time that they were a team while he was alive. But I think he's going to go back to Houston. But if he wants to come play for the Giants, if the Giants are interested, I would be a fan of the move. Anytime you can get more playmakers on the outside, it's going to help. you got to have good receivers in this league. And Mike Evans, he is one of the best. What do you think? Should the Giants sign Mike Evans? I don't think he's going back to Tampa Bay. We talked about it earlier in the season. The report was that Mike Evans, if a contract extension did not come to fruition prior to the season, uh, prior to the season starting, he was not going to negotiate with, in the, uh, with them in the offseason, and he's going to move on. What do you think? Should the Giants sign Mike Evans? Type S for sign, type P for pass. Another 1,000-yard season. I think that's 10 in a row for the former Texan and Aggie. Yuli says, if we don't take a QB in the first three rounds, do we go Joe Milton? in the fourth and the fifth. My opinion on taking quarterbacks in the fourth and fifth round is this. If you, I don't want to draft quarterbacks that aren't first or second rounders. That's just my opinion. Because um, if you're going to draft a quarterback, you need that. How do I want to illustrate this point? I'm only drafting quarterbacks I think that can win you a Super Bowl. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't think Joe Milton can win you a Super Bowl. Could be wrong. Might prove me wrong in a couple of years. But if you thought he was that good, why not draft him in the first round? I know there's other quarterbacks. You'll get Russell Wilson. You'll get Dak Prescott. You'll get Jalen Hurts in the second round. Shoot, Brock Purdy, last pick of the seventh round. In my opinion, I'm only drafting – not my opinion. I'm only drafting a quarterback in the first or second round. That, that's just where I rock and roll with that. I'm not the biggest Joe Milton fan. Extremely athletic, extremely big arm. Didn't love what he put on tape this year for Tennessee, in my opinion. Saquon Barkley is him, says, is it possible to trade for Cooper Cup? Always possible, right? Um, yeah, technically possible, but I don't know if I'm doing that. You got to pay him a whole lot of money. He's aging and he's dealt with injuries now for two years in a row. Damn good player. Getting close to 30 years old. If he's not already 30 years old, I would say, no, I would not do it. But yes, it is absolutely possible. Um, I wouldn't do it though. I wouldn't do it. Sloppy top says going into next year. We don't draft a QB. I know you were vocal about having another QB on the roster. Who would you sign? Um, it's a good question, my man. I'm drafting a quarterback, though. That's just what I'm doing. If they don't draft a QB, you're in a sticky situation because – let me just look at it real quick. 2024 NFL free agents at the quarterback position. Um, here we go. You got guys like Kirk Cousins. You're not signing Kirk Cousins. I'm not overpaying for Ryan Tannehill. How about Jacoby Brissett? Jacoby Brissett has a little bit of a backup. If you don't draft a quarterback, wouldn't mind that. Um, also, I wouldn't mind having Jameis Winston on this team, man. <laughs> I just, there's something I like about Jameis Winston. I like a backup quarterback that can come in and just light it up. May throw 25 touchdowns, may throw 25 picks, but I like myself some Jameis Winston. I think Gardner Minshew is going to be too expensive. Um, I don't want Josh Dobbs. I wouldn't mind signing Tyler Huntley. I think he's a really good backup, uh, but I think he's going to command top dollar. I'm looking at a guy like Jacoby Brissett, Jameis Winston. I like those two guys. I like those two guys. We'll get to more questions coming up, but first, I got to tell you about our proud sponsor, Game Time, the number one way to buy tickets. Download the Game Time app. Just go into the App Store, type in Game Time, download it. The app looks like it does at the bottom. I believe that's the bottom right of the screen. Uh, the big G right there. Just use promo code GIANTSCHAT and you're going to get $20 off. You get the best seats for the lowest prices guaranteed. And as the event gets closer, the prices 
will drop. My favorite feature, though, is when you're debating on which seats to buy when the prices are listed, when you click on different seats, it gives you the different views from your seat of the arena, the stage, or the stadium. It's not just Giants games. NFL, NBA, college football, college basketball. You can go to concerts. You can go to theater events and more. Download the Game Time app. Use the promo code GIANTSCHAT, and you're going to save $20 off. I've used Game Time a whole bunch. Bought a couple of tickets this summer to some concerts, and I felt good about myself because I know I saved some money. Download the app. Use the promo code GIANTSCHAT. Patrick Clark coming in with a question. What's up, Brody? Should we trade down and add picks and draft Jaden Daniels or further down? So right now the Giants are projected to pick number seven. In the mock draft we did last week that came from Dane Brugger, the number one draft guy in the world, in my opinion, he had Jaden Daniels going number seven. I'm not so sure how far you can trade down if you want Daniels. And I honestly think throughout the draft process, Daniels' is the stock is going to rise. I think he's going to test really well. I think people are going to love watching him throw on air. And I think that he's a guy that people are going to like talking to and they like his makeup and stuff like that. I don't think you can trade too far down to select him. Um, so should we? If the goal is to draft Jane Daniels, I don't know how far you're draft, trading down. You might just have to take him at the pick you're sitting at. Just my opinion. Maya's world. What's up, Marshall Green and also Patrick Seaman? Do you guys see the New York Giants going to be in the playoffs this year? I always got to read Maya's world's questions like that. <sighs> no, I don't. The Packers beating the Chiefs Monday night really hurt. Really hurt. And the Jets, they lost to the Falcons. That also hurt. But I'll say this. It's going to beat the Packers on Monday Night Football. We're going to be talking playoff picture that following Monday, or that following Tuesday. Let's see what they do against the Packers Monday night. Rosenberg, what up, brother? I'm thinking offseason, Marsh. Saquon loves the Giants because they drafted him, but I don't know if he'll play on a franchise. Do you think he'll force a trade? No. I think Saquon Barkley would play on a franchise tag. Um, shoot, he did it this year pretty much. Came back and didn't miss a practice. Didn't miss anything. Saquon loves the Giants. I think he loves being a giant and what being a giant means, especially post-career. Well, guys like Victor Cruz. Well, guys like Michael Strahan. Well, guys that were once a giant, always a giant. I think they're going to franchise tag him. That's what I would do. Now, I know it stinks, but think about it like this. Made $11 million this year. He's going to make another $12 million this upcoming year. I'll take $23 million over two years for the running back position, all fully guaranteed. I said it in a video last week. He's getting closer to 30 years old. It's true. He'll be 27 in February, I believe. Um, I'm not giving a 27-year-old running back who has injury issues every single year a guaranteed long-term deal. That's not how I'm operating a franchise. I would franchise tag him this year. I know this is going to upset some people. I'd do it again next year because this year isn't technically not the franchise tag. They could do it two more times. Could it bring some dysfunction and some hurt feelings to your team? Absolutely. But it's best for the Giants to do so. I truly do believe that. Patrick Clark, who do you think will be our starting QB at this time next year? That's a great question. I'm hoping it's Jane Daniels. I'm hoping it's Jane Daniels. But I think it's going to be Daniel Jones. I think it's going to be Daniel Jones. If you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Free Giants content every single day. Hit that sub button and turn those notifications on so you never miss a video. Kind of put you on the spot right there. Patrick Clark, great question. I saw him go through the process. Yeah. I think it's going to be Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones. I'm hoping one. it's Jaden Daniels, though. No, he said this time next year. Oh, this time next year. Oh, I think he said week one. No. This time next year. Oh, so you still think it's DJ this time next year? Yeah. Wow. It's pretty disappointing. Wow. I'm shocked. If Jaden Daniels is on the roster. It's Jaden Daniels. Okay. I'm not sold the Giants are going to draft a QB. It's what I would do. Yeah. It's what I would do. Um, let's see what plays out over these next five games. Let's see what plays out. Let's see where they're picking in the draft. And uh, we can go from there. Let's run it back. Let's do one more mailbag, and then we're going to bounce on out of here. Already been live for an hour on the channel today. Also, Seeps, we're up to $44 in Super Chats. If we get to a hundred dollars in super chats, I'm gonna end the show with a boot. I didn't drink on Sunday because the Giants weren't playing. 
I only drink when the Giants or Knicks play. I need to get my fix today. Let's go. If we get to $100 in Super Chats, I'm doing a boot. We're at $44 right now. I was kind of thinking that maybe we brought back the Tommy DeVito deal, but I'm not so sure he's going to start this week. And we look real stupid. And by we, I mean me. If I wore Tommy DeVito gear. And he would look so stupid. And he wasn't playing. That sucks. Ah. You think we got enough in the chamber for one more? Yeah. All right, let's dive you guys into have it. Been killing it. Thank you to everybody getting their questions in. Let's get into this one. You want to just come out to the question, just so we get a little different of a look. Tyrano, I know I'm saying. It. I know I mispronounce a lot of your guys' names. I'm just pretty dumb. I'm just pretty dumb. Rob says, guys, where's the holiday screens on the blue screens behind you guys? That's a good question. That'd actually be pretty cool. Like get get some stockings and stuff like that. Like a little holiday like graphics package. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. We'll run it by the bosses. Yeah, we'll run it by him. We'll run it by him. Say Rob's got it. All right. <laughs> Take social out of there. That was in the last one too. I was hoping you were going to notice that. No. That's why I was kind of stretching the intro along in that last one. Oh, my bad. I was like, because I didn't notice that. I was like, I wonder if anyone else. No one knows what that means. Yeah. Tricks, riddles, and puzzles. What a name. Gus Nini says, Marshall, not going to lie. You should do a live stream drafting people from the chat and compare whose team is better. You guys yeah. are all 99 overalls in my book. Yeah. Except for Krimi. He's a 95. <laughs> Kermit could be 100, 100 overall if he wanted to. He's not a guy that loves practice. He doesn't. Kermit's not doesn't. a practice player. He's not. Krim's he's dad's a, not a practice player. He's a 84 don't stretch on game days type, type yeah, of guy. Exactly. Exactly. All righty. Let's get into it. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports, and I'm your host, Marshall Green. We got a mailbag coming up. We're just going to answer questions from subscribers. So if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Maybe we'll get to your question next time. This one coming in from Giants Suck Again. It says Jadavion Clowney has been great for the Ravens. Should we sign him in free agency? There's supposed to be a C in there, someone, my mayor. Um, but look, Jadavion Clowney is having, in my opinion, one of the best seasons of his career. He's got seven and a half sacks as we are what in week, is this week 13, week 14? We're going to get entering week 14, probably on pace to get around 10 and a half sacks. I think he's only had 10 sacks one time in his career. Uh, it was 2021. He had nine sacks with the Cleveland Browns, if I do remember. Um, Giants need to improve the pass rush 100%. Kayvon Thibodeau's a stud. He's going to be there. Aziz Ozulari is really good when healthy. Can't depend on him anymore. Kayvon Thibodeau cannot be your only investment at the at the edge rusher position going into the 2023 season. And while Clowney is having a great year, I'm not paying him big money. He's done this thing over and over again where he signs one-year deal after one-year deal after one-year deal, hoping to have a season like he is right now. That way he can cash in on somewhat of a multi-year deal. And I'm not paying multi-years for big money for Jadavion Clowney. I think there's other guys you could go and get. I'd love to go and sign Josh Allen, the outside linebacker of the Jacksonville Jaguars in NFL free agency. If you're going to pay big money for a guy, I'm going with Allen over Clowney, and I'm also going with Daniil Hunter over him. Clowney probably cheaper, but I think there's just a little bit more risk involved. We've seen him fizzle with a couple of teams, didn't end well in Cleveland, and I wonder if he can keep up this type of play when he's got a little bit more cheddar in those pockets. What do you think? It would be pretty cool to have Clowney and Thibodeau on opposite sides, two really talented players and guys that are underrated in the run game. What do you think? Should the Giants sign Clowney? Type S for sign. Type P for pass. Saquon Barkley says, let's trade for Scary Terry. Is that possible? Look, it's always possible to trade for players. But for a trade to happen, you need party A and party B to agree to the compensation. And I don't believe that the Washington Commanders would trade Scary Terry to the New York Giants. I and the Giants do need another receiver, and I think Scary Terry is a damn good one. I just don't see Washington trading their best receiver to a division rival in the New York Giants. Could be wrong, but that's just what I see. 
Karen Terrier Mom. No, I'm just kidding. What up, Karen? Do you think the Williams trade started the Dable versus Wink feud? That is something I haven't even thought of, Karen. And that's why you're one of the smartest Giants fans I know. I'm sure that Wing Martindale was not happy about it. I'm trying to process this as this goes through. If I'm a defensive coordinator and my job is out there to go coach a good defense and win games, yeah, I'm going to be pretty damn upset when you trade my second best defensive line, or I guess third best at this point. Kayvon's probably better than Leonard Williams. So yeah, I'm sure he was a little bit upset about that. I think at the end of the day, he's just, I don't, from what I have heard, Brian Dable has somewhat set unrealistic expectations on this defense. And Wink Martindale is a cool, calm, laid back, no beef, address situations verbally. And Brian Dable is kind of the opposite. One's a firecracker and one's a guy that is just a football dude. I think Wink's a damn good coach. I'd keep him around. I haven't thought about it from this angle. I think you could be on to something. I think you could be on to something right there. Leonard Zinnard says, where do you rank our defense? Top 15. Um, right around there. Right around there. I think that the defensive stats are a little bit inflated because look, the Giants have just lost a lot of games, and a large part of it is due to your offense not putting your defense in good position. I thought in 2022 the Giants played great complementary football. I don't think they're doing that this year, and I think that definitely hurts the numbers. I don't think they're a top 10 team. I think they're close to top 15. I mean, talk about just elite players you have. Dexter Lawrence is great. Kayvon Thibodeau is great. Bobby O'Karake is great. Michael McFadden is coming along as a top inside linebacker. Deontay Banks is a good rookie corner. I think McKenney is solid. I don't know if they're top 15. I'd say anywhere from 15 to 20. Bottom half of the league, but closer to somewhere in the middle, if that makes sense. Gilly! What up, Gilly? What would convince you that DeVito is the way? Better tape. Better tape. Finding checkdowns. Going through reads. Being quicker as he goes through progressions. Um, he's no scrub. He's no scrub. I once said he's the worst quarterback in the NFL. I don't feel that way anymore. Um, but I do think that Tyrod Taylor is better. I think he gives the Giants a better chance to win. I understand why you some people would be Tommy DeVito, start younger, going to be on the team longer, and potentially you know, find out that you have backup quarterbacks. But you paid Tyrod Taylor $8 million to be this year's backup quarterback. And I think that's what he's going to be when uh, Mon Monday night gets here. We're going to get to more questions coming up in a second. But first, I got to give a huge shout-out to Factor, today's sponsor of Giants Now. I am a massive fan of Factor. When you go to factormeals.com slash GiantsChat50 and you use the promo code GiantsChat50, you're going to get 50% off your order. What I love about Factor is it fits my lifestyle. I am an extremely busy person. I work a lot. And I don't always have time to go to the grocery store. I don't always have time to prep my groceries and cook my meals. And I absolutely hate doing dishes because Seeps always leaves his dirty dishes in the sink, and I can never get to him. Well, thanks to Factor, I don't have to deal with that. I always know where my next meal is going to be. It's always going to be easily made. Pick your pre-made meals. Prepped and cooked to perfection. Heat and enjoy. The best part is, I don't have to throw my dirty dishes on top of Seeps' dirty dishes. Uh, dishes. The food is awesome. I feel healthy when I eat it. I just feel smarter. I feel like I'm saving money. And it's just something that really benefits my life. If you're an on-the-go person, you're busy, and you're looking for the number one ready-to-eat meals, go get hooked up with Factor. All that information will be clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. Naquan Page coming in with a $2 super chat. Naquan, we appreciate you, Brody. Says, do we bring back Kevin Zeitler for right guard? I wouldn't hate it. Um, He's a little bit long in the tooth. I believe he's close to 34 years old. Let me quickly look. He's 33 years old. He'll be 34 in March. The Giants never should have cut him. All they did was cut him so they can get money to give Kenny Galladay, who we're still freaking paying right now. There's other guys that I would look at, though. Um, 
look, if he wants to come finish his career as a giant on a one-year cheap deal, sure. But I'm looking for more of a solid, permanent fit Naquan at that right guard spot and kind of instead of just a stopgap one to maybe two-year play with Zeitler. I want a guy that's going to be there for three, four, five, hopefully a while as a starting right guard. But Zeitler's a good player, and the Giants never should have released him to save the money to sign Kenny Galladay. Saquon Barkley is him. He's him. Says, at this point in hype, I at this point in time, that's got to be it, at this point in time, I think Daniel Jones is going to ball next season. If he's the starting quarterback for the Giants, I'll be rooting for him. I'm just kind of over it. I'm just kind of over the Daniel Jones experience. I don't really have much more to say about Daniel Jones. Um, I'm just kind of over it. I'm just kind of over it. You pay a quarterback $40 million, he's supposed to elevate. He doesn't. Rob Jacob says, Marsh, would you be upset the Giants drafted Latu or Dallas? No. No, I, I would not be upset at all. Um, while, yes, I do think they should draft a quarterback, but I'm not drafting a quarterback at a spot he shouldn't be drafted at just for the sake that I need a quarterback. If you can get a top edge rusher to pair alongside Dexter Lawrence and Kayvon Thibodeau, I am in on that. I am in on that. Um, yeah, I would not be upset about that at all. I would not be upset about that at all. Rules? Marshall's rules to being a successful football team. Protect the quarterback. Get after the other team's quarterback. And get playmakers to help your quarterback. Dallas Turner, he helps you get after the other quarterback. As well as Leitu Latu, Leitu Latu, however you say his name. I'll know his name if he's a giant, I know that. Johnson U! The Daniel Jones experience or the Julius Randle experience? What's the difference? No, nah, I'm just kidding. Julius Randle is a way better professional athlete than Daniel Jones. Um, I would prefer probably the Julius Randle experience just for the simple fact that at least during the regular season, he's a damn good player. Um, and, like, yeah, he's more frustrating because of the talent. But, uh, yeah, I'd rather roll with – I got a freaking root for Randle and Daniel Jones. It's ridiculous. What did I do? What did I do? Gilly! $2 super chat. I think our QB will be picked up round two. Who drops? You look at maybe a guy like J.J. McCarthy. Maybe a guy like Quinn Ewers. Maybe a guy like uh, Bo Nix drops to the early second round. I mean, how many quarterbacks are going in the first round? You got K.O. Williams. You got Drake May. I think Michael Penix goes first round. And I think Jane Daniels goes first round. Maybe LV sure says Randall's nice, you bugging. Let me guess, you don't watch playoff basketball. Um, different, different show, different channel for that, though. Um, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, Quinn Ewers. I mean, those are guys that you could be looking at in the second round, Gilly. Those are guys, I think so. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Free, free, free. Giants content every single day. I'm kind of with Chris Brown. If the Giants don't take a QB in the first round, don't draft one. That's kind of my thought process. Unless you, you get one at the top of the second round that's still there. LV sure says, LOL, his ankle was hurt. You cold. What was the reason for the bad play versus the Hawks? Look, I, I don't want to do this. <laughs> we can't go down this rabbit hole right now. I just can't. I just can't. We just can't. I, I just don't get the frick. Why? Like, why do people do this? It's like, what up, Joey? Vince G says it's ridiculous to start Tyrod. See if Tommy can be a long-term backup. Well, you you paid him eight million dollars. Giants are trying yeah. to win games. Yeah. And he gives you the best chance. It's kind of like, like when you take all the hoopla out of it and you just look at a picture. Yes. It's not even close. It's not close. Yeah. It's fun, though. I mean. What you've seen already is that he can potentially be he can, a backup quarterback. Yeah. He can be that gamer that can. But it's also like. Do I want to see him go out there and get killed by the Packers this week? 
But also, if DeVito was starting in Buffalo where Tyrod had to step in, it's not even the same experience. Tyrod Aliso was able to manage the ship. Oh, I don't think you score a point. Yeah. Like, is Tyrod better? Yes. Yes. The silent tape screams that Tyrod Taylor is better than Tommy DeVito. I don't know. I, Tyrod, Tyrod's going to get the boys going. I feel like he almost fel- had you beat no, Buffalo on the I road. Know. Like the fellas, I feel like can rally around Tyrod a little bit. I could rally around Tyrod. Duncan in the chat. What up, Duncan? I am a TD guy, but to an extent. Mr. Rick <laughs> oh! with the twenty dollar super chat, Mr. Rick. Giants now is not the same when you are not in the building, my man. Oh, I love the profile pic. It's so beautiful. That's awesome. So beautiful. I mentioned Bo Nix back a while, and seeps and you beat me up. <laughs> we still don't like him. Those I were don't... just guys that I listed that could be. I don't yeah. want him. I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot <sighs> pole. It's so hard, Mr. Rick. It's so hard. He couldn't even beat Washington once this year. I know. He's lost to, my... He's lost to Washington three times in a row. Is he a good – what is he in the NFL? What is Bo Nix? He's a guy, in my opinion, that if you have – he needs the Jalen Hurts yes. type of team around him. Yes. And I do not want to build a team where I have to have the best roster in the NFL to win. Yep. A quarterback should be able to elevate a B-plus roster to contend – with top teams. It's so damn hard under the salary cap to have a top roster in this league. Yeah. Bo Nix doesn't stink. Johnson, you says Bo Nix okay. is like a Sam Howe. Howe has probably got more. Actually, I don't hate that. I see him as more of a Mitch Trubisky. Is that a yeah. bad take? No, I just, I just don't know with Bo Nix. Because sometimes I'm watching, I'm like, oh, this guy's a... When that guy's got a clean pocket and he can get his back foot. Exactly. And he's got a little playmaking in him. Yeah. Gilly says Jalen Hurts would be worse than DJ on our team. I just just don't agree with that. And I'm not even a Jalen Hurts guy. I just don't agree with that. I actually don't think Jalen Hurts is that great. But he's better than Daniel If it's a guy like Bo Nix, who's not like the most talented, I feel like he needs to be able to rally guys. I don't know if he's a rallier. Also, I do think we're going to see a lot of quarterbacks go in the first round. I, th- I think we could see like six. I think we're going to see teams just get desperate this year and just be like, we need to take a guy. Giants for Life says, Marsh, do you think we get J.J. McCarthy in the second if we don't get a QB in the first? You're a J.J. McCarthy guy. I am a J.J. guy. I support him. He is Daniel Jones. He's 6'2", it's Daniel so, Jones. 6'2", yeah, Daniel Jones. It's, uh, it's honestly it's pretty accurate, dude. Not as athletic, I think. No, I mean, he's probably... JJ's, JJ's an athlete. I think JJ is a better scrambler than DJ, but I don't think he's a better runner than DJ. Yeah. JJ's Where, got a good pocket feel, though. And I feel like he can make a little bit more plays outside the pocket than Jones. And also, JJ's in one accurate QB. Yeah. Like, he, he is very accurate. It's just so hard to judge college quarterbacks these days because 99% of the time they're being told to th- who to throw the ball for to pre-snap. Yeah. I, I want to see a quarterback go from, I got, a, I got a corner route, I have a go route, and I have an underneath route with a backside dig. I want to see him go to locate this corner, high-low him, then high-low the corner in the go, and then be able to come off that side step and hit the backside dig. But you don't also, see that in college anymore. And it's also, but like a guy like JJ, though, I could see a guy like Dable almost. See, but like, I don't know. I feel like Dable would also prefer, prefer a guy like Jaden Daniels. Where it's like, JJ, if you give him an offense, like if he's in a Shanahan system, it's just out on time, on target. That's JJ. Is he Brock Purdy? He's got a little bit of Purdy. Because Purdy, he, those, you know, we talk about the intermediate throws yeah, of JJ. I, really, I like JJ from 7 to 15 yards inside his, the hashes his, and numbers. He can hit those throws. He's got a good also, fastball. I, I will say, I think JJ's getting a little underrated because people are acting like this dude doesn't have, like, he's got arm talent. Like, I just, I don't know. Maybe JJ's, just because of how good Michigan's been, 
and that they don't necessarily need him. I don't know. Slim Cash says low key feel Drake May as Daniel Jones too. They could not be more different. Yeah, I don't. I think you're just looking at both guys are six foot five and white and skinny. But um, you can have your own opinion. I would just say watch the tape. May go he, watch Daniel Jones's college tape and then go watch Drake May's college tape and you will never say that again. Yeah. <laughs> like May does need some more. He's got to put on some freaking weight, man. Same with JJ though. JJ's his ability good. to throw the ball clears Daniel Jones. Yeah. All righty, we're gonna sign off on today's stream. We've been live for 81 minutes. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. We'll have videos the rest of the week. We'll be live Monday night. Green Bay Giants. Let's go.